All right, so in this lesson, we're going to begin learning about the antiderivative and about integrals. Now, this is a this is a big deal, let's put it that way. And I don't just say that, even though I'm a math nerd and I love math and I you know, do it for fun. I'm not just saying that because of that. It's really going to be key to your survival in this course because it really is kind of like learning um, derivatives, but like the opposite. So you, if you remember back in chapter like two, when you first learned about derivatives and now you end up using them all throughout chapter two and chapter three, now we're going to learn about integrals or antiderivatives and we're going to use them essentially to connect with derivatives and we're going to be using them all throughout the rest of the course so it's a big deal so pay attention all right so let's start off with this question if we're given that f prime of x equals 3x squared what could f of x be so take a minute to try to see if you can figure it out pause the video and then once you got one unpause it and check with me so one possible answer for f of x could be x cubed. And we can just check if this works by just taking the derivative of this and getting, we'll see that we'll get 3x squared. So this will be an answer. So this is essentially called an antiderivative of f prime of x because um, instead of taking the derivative of this to get this, we take the antiderivative because of the meaning that we take the derivative of this we should get this. So this is called an antiderivative. So formally, we define an antiderivative to be another function, and we traditionally use capital F of X to represent an antiderivative. That's how most textbooks will um, represent an antiderivative. So a, a function capital F of X is an antiderivative of F of X on some interval I when the derivative of capital F of X is equal to F of X for all X in that interval I. So now let's follow up with, from question one and see, can we find another antiderivative besides, you know, three X squared or besides X cubed? So go again, go ahead and pause the video. And once you come up with it, unpause it and see if you can get the answer correct. So another possible answer for the antiderivative could be x cubed plus one. Because if you take the derivative of x cubed plus one, you're gonna get three x squared. So that works. Another possible answer would be x cubed minus 17. Because again, if you take the derivative of x cubed minus 17, you'll get x or 3x squared again. So you may have got something different, but what you probably have caught on to is that you can simply add any constant to x cubed and we would still get the same derivative of 3x squared because the derivative of a constant is just zero. So it doesn't really affect um, the answer. So there's an infinite possible number of antiderivatives. So we can't just name them, you know, f of x, because f of x has to represent something specific. We call each of these f of x, you know, what it makes sense. So we have a different form to represent the general antiderivative of f, which will be capital F of x plus c, where this constant represents any, you know, any, you know, any number, any, you know, any, scale any real number, you know, it could be negative or positive, doesn't matter. Now, um, interchangeably, because we're gonna be going back and forth throughout um, this chapter. And this is really more if you want to really understand the concepts and proofs behind this, we can use um, capital F of X and the derivative of capital F of X and interchange with F of X, meaning that if we make capital F of X plus C equal to F of X, then we have that the derivative of capital F of X is just going to be F of X, is just going to be F of X.
So um, let's look at let's look at uh, some uh, more practice problems. Okay, so here. I'll take my my screen froze there for a second. Anyways, um, we have capital F prime of X is two X, and capital F prime of X is X. So we have six um, general. We have six derivatives of capital F. So we want to find the the most general antiderivative that would yield these derivatives. So go ahead and. Um, Pause the video and try to solve each of these on your own. And once you get an answer, um, you can go ahead and unpause it and check to see if you get the, the same answer as I do. Okay, so here we would get that capital F of X would be equal to X cubed or X squared plus C. And again, you can check the answer by seeing if you take the derivative of this, you would get two X. For B, the general antiderivative would be equal to X squared over two plus C. And for C, you would get the most general antiderivative would be X cubed over three plus C. And here, if the derivative is sine of X, then the most general antiderivative would be equal to the negative cosine of X plus C. And then for E, this, remember this is the same as X to the negative two. So then the antiderivative would be equal to negative X to the negative one plus C. Now in general, if our derivative is x to the n, instead of you know multiplying by n and subtracting one from the power, we're gonna do the opposite or the inverse operation. So we're gonna add one to the exponent and divide by that. So we're gonna have x to the n plus one over n plus one. And then we're gonna, of course, add our constant c to it. I'm gonna try to fit it here, all right. So I like to think of this as like the reverse power rule or the anti-power rule, because you're doing the opposite of what you would do when you use the power rule for derivatives. So um, so so by now you may have been pick, might may have picked up on the pattern. And just like when you first were learning how to take derivatives, um, when you first learn how to take um anti-derivatives, it'll take some practice, but after after you know many, many examples and practice, 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 you'll be good at it and it won't seem like an issue at all. Okay, so um, let's say we got a differential equation and that would just be anything like y prime equals three x or y prime equals x plus one, anything that involves derivatives of y and you know x and y. So let's say we have that the differential, that the, the derivative y prime is equal to two what would the most general solution of this be? Now, again, you can just you know work it out by using that you know reverse logic that we've been doing. But you want to make sure you don't forget about the concept about what the derivative really means. And what this is saying, remember, is in, in other words, dy dx. Remember, this represents a slope, the slope of a tangent line, the slope of the tangent line to the function y to the function y or f of x usually um, is two. So the slope is always two, it never changes. Now, initially, a common response is to think this is a horizontal line, but no, it's gonna be a linear function. 
it'll be the linear function that has you know a slope of two. So the most common one, y equals two x. Because all along the line y equals two x, the slope is two. Remember, we're going up one or going up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. So don't forget about what that what this derivative means conceptually. And, and of course, there's more than one answer. We can have, you know, um, another parallel line, y equals 2x minus 2. Or you can have another parallel line up here, y equals 2x. You can say plus, maybe plus 4. So again, in general, your general solution would be that f of x or y would be 2x plus c. So again, don't forget about the, 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 the um, geometrical concepts behind a derivative. So now let's look a little more into what's going on when we um, find derivatives and antiderivatives. So when you have a differential equation, let's say of the form that we're used to dy over dx is equal to you know, f of x, Again, we can, we're going to be using this interchangeably with the form where we have the derivative of capital F of X being equal to F of X. So this is be the same as the derivative of capital F of X. So interchangeably, they're, they're going to be the same thing. And again, this will be, this will be helpful if you really want to learn how you really want to learn um, the how the how the formulas work by going over the proofs in detail um, but again it's always good to use proper notation now let's say we want to um go from the derivative back to the function and we want to go back to an equation for y so what we would do is essentially isolate the y terms on the one side and the, and the x terms on another so treat the dx like it's a denominator multiply both sides by dx and what we would get is that dy would be equal to f of x dx. Or again, this will be interchangeably equivalent to by being equal to capital F prime of x dx. But still, how do we get to the, an equation for y? How do we go from the derivatives to the original equation for you know y, like over here, like y equals two x plus four? How do we go from that without just simply writing it? What type of what type of like math operation can we do? So we've been calling it anti-differentiation, but the more proper term is known as integration. And for now, we're going to be a doing what's called indefinite integration. And we call it indef indefinite integration because we're gonna get um, an expression, we're gonna get an equation, we're not gonna get a, a, like a defined number. And we're gonna use this, this integral symbol, which is gonna look like a stretched out S. This is gonna be our new symbol of the chapter. This is an integral sign. Pretty cool. I know when I first learned this, I felt really smart. You know, people see this and they don't know calculus. They're like, Ugh. like what? It's too hard. But we're gonna learn exactly what this is. But essentially, it's gonna represent that we're finding the antiderivative of some function. So this is called the integration. This is, this is basically representing the integration process. It's an integral sign. So what we do here is we apply integration of both sides. We go and we integrate dy and we integrate the right side as well, the integral of f of x dx. And then when you do this, what happens is you get y 
on the left, y will be equal to the integral of f of x dx. When you integrate this, you're gonna get the antiderivative of f of x, which we found to be capital F of x. Whoa, pencil's exploding. Capital F of x plus our constant C. Let me write this a little more neatly. I'm gonna box this because it's a big deal. And so let's label this. This dx here is gonna represent our variable of integration. Mm, I think I'm running out. Let me use my other blue. This is gonna let us know that we're integrating with respect to x. So variable of integration. That's what that dx means. This, you know, whatever this um, expression will be for f of x, that's gonna be called as our, that's gonna be known as our integrand. Variable integration is that. Probably should have wrote this a little more separated. That'll be our, in, this will be our integrand. And on the right side, this capital F of X, as we learned, is an antiderivative of F of X. And this C is known as our constant of integration. All right, so now um, this is gonna be the new um, expression that we're gonna be working with. This is called an indefinite integral in general. This is known as an indefinite integral. Later, we're gonna learn about definite integrals, very similar to this, but for now we're gonna be working with indefinite integrals. And if you wanna go a little further into how this works mathematically, well, what this means is if we differentiate the integral, we're gonna basically cancel out the integration process. In other words, integration and differentiation are, are inverse operations. It's kind of like how adding and subtracting, if you were to add five to a number and then subtract five to a number, the adding five and subtracting five undo each other. So basically nothing happens. So if I was to differentiate this, let me write it like this. Let's, let's, let's go down here. Again, we're going to another level if you want to really understand this. I want to differentiate this with respect to x, you know, dy dx on the left. I would differentiate that, the middle integral, f of x dx. I'm gonna put that in brackets. And then that would be equal to the integral of this with respect to x. Now, again, why am I doing um, the, 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 the derivative operation to each you know, part of this equation, you know, the left, middle, and right? It's just like when you're solving an equation by adding, you know, adding a number. If you're to add five to an equation, you have to add five to each part. So adding, I would add five to y, be y plus five is equal to this integral plus five is equal to this expression plus five. So I'm differentiating this entire equation. So I have to differentiate each part. So that's why I'm doing this. It's just, again, probably a new 
new type of operation that you're, you know, I don't expect you to be familiar with because we just learned this, but um, that's what's going on. And so then what this does, let me go to the next page so that we can write this out a little more neatly. Well, let me just, let me just extend this down here so then I don't have to carry it down. Extra sheet. So what this does is, you know, the left we already know is our dy dx. We have our dy dx is equal to the derivative of this integral. And what that does is it cancels out that integral operation. So this will just be equal to f of x. And these dx's also cancel out. So you just get f of x in the middle here. And here we'll have the derivative of capital F of x. So, so capital F prime of x and the derivative of a constant c is just zero. So you're just gonna get this. And if you go back up here, back up to what we did, let me actually zoom out. If you look up here where I wrote this um, earlier, you see how I wrote that um, we can rewrite dy as being equal to f of x dx. So that's where that dx would be. We can multiply both sides by dx. We could go and then get, transform this by multiplying each of these by dx. So we would get dy equals f of x dx on this third side would be capital F prime of x dx. And all of that would be, you know, what we, what's going on over here. So it's going in the opposite direction. You know, we're working our way backwards to this. So, so differentiation and integration are inverse operations. They undo each other. And we're, again, we're gonna go into more detail. This is just the start of it. So don't worry if you're not completely understanding this yet. You know, this is really only part of the first lesson of this entire chapter. So, um, so it's gonna be very, gonna be very cool and see like how all this all ties together. So um, go ahead and, and try some practice problems and let me know how you're doing. Hope that helps.